Hello everyone and welcome to this Balance video conversation. Uh, for us as a church at Keris, we have gone through a series called Balance, where each week we have been looking at two different concepts. So they might be theological concepts or Christian practices uh, throughout history or, or ways in which we outwork our faith. And today we're going to be looking at the two concepts of word and spirit. And uh, we had a few, oh, a couple of people, wasn't it, preaching yeah. this on Shari? But um, Shari, you preached this one. I did. Where did you, where did you preach it? Just All like, over. You preached that every Apart every, from Bracknell, sorry. Oh, I went, okay. Every site apart from Bracknell. Okay, and, and Eda Athley preached <laughs> and it Eda in Bracknell, preached didn't it Bracknell. they? So um, you can access uh, those uh, conversations, those talks, those sermons um, on the Spotify uh, podcasts that we have for each of our site, and you can find them on Apple Podcasts as well. And actually your message you recorded for YouTube as well. I you? did. So um, if you haven't watched it yet, why not pause it? This conversation go and watch that sermon first and then the idea of these conversations is we're going to just sort of explore this sort of stuff a little bit more and hear a little bit more about what maybe you didn't have a chance to sort of share yeah. in the preach and, and things like that um so do you want to start us off by i guess summarizing summarizing your message for those of you who haven't pressed pause <laughs> and haven't gone back and watched it what's the what's the message about so i guess um the, the context of it was how as individuals and as a community and um, we have to how do we live in the tension of both word and spirit mm. and um looking at how actually we need both to yeah. be able to live this christian life yeah. um to be able to grow in in our faith and actually they work together in tandem one um you know the word gives us that the foundations that we need um to to, to, to live the christian life and then the holy spirit just brings life and light mm. and transformation power to the word that we're reading. Yeah, good so, stuff. Yeah. So so we need both, we need which both. is the spoiler alert for all the messages, Sorry. isn't it? But no, it's fine. Because <laughs> yeah. actually we're, we're realising across all this series is that yeah. there are these things that can seem quite yeah. opposing, right? They, they can, can seem do. quite different yeah. and um, almost not going to say against each other, but very, very far apart yeah. from each other. So yeah. what? how has this looked in your life? You've been a Christian a long time. Been a Christian um, very long um, time. So do you want to share a little bit of your story of, particularly when, when it comes to word and yeah. spirit and how that's yeah. kind of been shaped? So yeah, I, I grew up um, in a Christian family. Mm. Um, I, I think the church that I grew up in was quite a, a good mixture of word and spirit. Mm. Um, you know, the word was drummed into me from a very early age. Um, and I can just remember in our, in our gatherings, you know, the word would be preached. Um, and I would see as a kid, you know, people just speaking in other tongues, I would mm. see healings and all that sort of thing as a kid. But then as I grew older, um, I guess it gets a bit tricky sometimes. Um, the word can be quite laborious, if I'm honest with mm. you. It can mm. sometimes appear boring, but that's just because I wasn't allowing the Holy Spirit, um, I guess, to bring that life and power that mm. I needed. So I would just see um, reading the word as just literally reading the Bible, and it can be quite weighty. Yeah. Um, so it took some time um, until I probably mm. sort of late teens mm. um, before I actually started understanding that actually both personally need yeah. to go together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so um, one of your roles here at the church is you're the sort of worship lead across all of our sites, lead, yeah. lead, like, across, overseeing worship across all the sites. Um, how, how does that, how did you go on that journey, just a little bit more in your story yeah. really of, of, you know, in your late teens? Yeah from a place where, yeah, you're embracing the spirit and you were talking earlier about you wanted to go to those festivals all yeah, the time yeah, and, yeah. and just being... Surprised. How did you make that transition? What did that look okay. like to get more into the word? OK, okay. so um, in terms of getting into the word, I was a little mm. bit stop-start. I'm sure there's many of us that are like that. But I remember, as I mentioned before, I would, um, I'd love to go to summer camps, youth camps, mm. And I would see like the Holy Spirit at work and that could be through, like I used to see like younger children like being filled with the Holy Spirit and that being evident through speaking in tongues. Um, I would see healing, I'd see hear and see prophetic words and I'd be like, I really want some of that. And um, I found over time that it would be an annual experience of the Holy Spirit for me, mm. just because I thought, right, I can get that at youth camp. Mm. And I'd be, you know, I think I was caught up with the emotion and the feelings and the experiences of being filled with the Holy Spirit. But yet when I went home and for the rest of the year, I would find it really difficult to, to speak in tongues. I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know what to mm -hmm. do. I think, yeah. um, you know, I wouldn't know how to pray for you if you were yeah. ill uh, yeah, or anything okay. like that. Yeah. And yeah. and this went on for a while. Um, I guess in the back of my mind, you know, you know, you need to get you pick up your Bible and pray. And then I think I just one one day just started to get into my Bible, started to get into the Word of God, and really having those private, personal, quiet times with God. 
mm. and just being filled with the word uh, and learning and allowing, yeah, learning to allow the Holy Spirit to bring light. And that was through speaking to others. It didn't happen on my own. It was yeah, okay. speaking with others yeah. and being taught that the, the Holy Spirit is what brings life and light mm. and, and helps you to understand what's being read. To the point where I remember I was literally watching an Israel Houghton video, mm. uh, DVD, uh, <laughs> and um, he was singing uh, Alpha and Omega. And something stirred within me and I was thinking, oh, goodness, this is like the feelings that I get when I'm at a summer camp, mm -hmm. but I'm not with anyone. Yeah, It's wow. just me and God. And I guess he was singing biblical truth, which resonated with me because that's what I've been reading. Yeah. And I, was, I just remember being on my own and the Holy Spirit, oh, I was aware, the Holy Spirit was always there, but I was aware that the Holy Spirit was with me. And I just began weeping and sobbing um, and yeah, just speaking in, other, in another language. And I think that was the first moment where I felt that the two came together for me. Yeah, okay. I didn't need to run to a, a summer camp to experience his presence, yeah. to experience the Holy Spirit at work. That's amazing. I was with God mm. and the two kind of came together from there. Yeah. It was like a light bulb mo moment. And mm. I'd been a Christian for a, a long time. Yeah, yeah. You know, oh, I didn't need yeah uh the youth leader to pump me up to get me yeah yeah suddenly it was a kind it was of like, it was a thing between you and god it was and it me wasn't, and god and it wasn't because either. i've been spending time reading his word mm -hmm. taking it in not necessarily understanding it all but like taking in the word of god and then the holy spirit just sort of moving in that moment yeah. to just it's, yeah like not to go no. down a rabbit hole but no, like no. there's there's something about worship songs that that yeah. simply speak bible passages yeah. that, that just carry something don't they i remember i can't remember the exact song it was now but i remember singing a song once in church and being like, what does that mean? Yeah, and I, yeah. I didn't have a clue what it yeah, meant. Yeah. And I, I Googled it and um, found, you know, found the it Bible passage it related to it. And, and it suddenly made so much more sense and a connection when we when we are singing and in worship truth. as well as yeah, that truth as well as, from the Bible is yeah, so important. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah. Um, so so we've heard about your life then. What what about individuals as a whole? What does it what does it look like for an individual in their daily life mm. to to live and carry move out in both word and spirit and what, what does that look like for an individual yeah. do you think i mean even things as simple as okay yes we need to get into the word so yeah. how can we get ourselves filled with the word of god you know it could be listening to worship songs that need to be sort of biblically you know theologically yeah. rich and full of biblical truth it could be like attending a small group the bible small group you know mm. attending mm. the bible course um it, small groups just getting yourself into the word of god mm. um on the on the word side, you know, you need you you need God's word. Um, there's yeah. no there's no getting away from it. You, you have to read the word of God, whether you listen to it audio, whether you read it, Bible studies, and then you know, engaging with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. asking just simply asking God to fill me with the Holy Spirit. Surround yourself with people who are further ahead of that journey. Mm -hmm. I think there's um, <sighs> that's how we just grow in our faith. That's how we grow in our walk with God. Um, Mm. Yeah, you need both. Yeah, you, you can't have one without the other. And, and it feels like the more so, if, the the more we engage with some of the practices oh. that lean into word and spirit, the more we can almost pick up the methods and the the ways in yeah. which we've done. So I was just thinking about um, Lectio three hundred and sixty five, for it. example. Like Lectio three hundred and sixty five is this app, and um, you know they will kind of cause you. It's like ten minutes long, isn't it, each yeah. day? And it causes you to basically stop, stop. and breathe yeah. and think and pray. And it reads a passage of scripture and then it call, asks a question about it. And, and for me, I quite like it because it is that really nice blend of word and yeah, spirit. There you go. Um, and, and honestly, I don't know about you, but honestly, I don't actually do it every day. But what? But when you do. That, when I do it, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. But also when I don't necessarily go into the app, I find myself when I'm reading the word still able to do it in that Stop. way because yeah. I'm just used to that method yeah. of, of yeah. doing it. And that's been really helpful for me. It's, just, it's just developing a a simple habit mm, which yeah. will just become foundational yeah that's really good um, to stop and think and reflect um, yeah yeah really good um so so that's for individuals um and we're all at different places so we yeah. might come back in some of this in a bit but um let's look at the church now so obviously we want to th the church is the people <laughs> but actually we're a community of people so how how do we operate and for us as a church we say we want to be a church with word and spirit yeah yeah um how, how do we the church maybe capital C church, global church, yeah, do this yeah. well. Um, but I guess for us particularly, Kerith, what does this look like 
in church life? I think what I've noticed is, um, so for example, if in terms of like embedding the word, if we've got a, a Thanksgiving or communion or baptisms, I feel that we explain it by bringing appropriate passages, Bible yeah. verses, just to explain what we're doing. So we mm. ground it and root what we're doing. We're not just doing this thing for yeah. the fun of it. Yeah. It's because, you know, this is the word of God and mm. we follow, follow yeah. it to a T, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I've noticed that. And I believe also, for example, our preachers, yeah, we've prepared, we've studied, mm. um, uh, but we make room for the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So, yes, we've prepared, we've read the word, but we just... Ask, well, I feel that we ask the Holy Spirit to, to move us. So if we need to go off script a little bit mm. and sense what's going on in the room, we can do that. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, we kind of have a structure of sorts, but we kind of move away and, and just listen to what the Holy Spirit is doing. And the yeah. only way we can do that is if we're reading the Word, because, you know, the Holy Spirit will bring stuff to us, he'll bring Bible passages perhaps yeah. that are relevant to stuff that's going on in the room. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the only way, yeah, we can do that is if we've already rooted ourselves in, mm. in the Word, I think. I was yeah. thinking about... Um, uh, say last Sundays yeah. that we've been doing this year. So this yeah. year we've just started this, I don't know how many we've done, three or four three or maybe, four year, um, yeah. where we've put aside the normal normal structure. structure haven't we? And I remember in the early days of planning those Sundays, somebody in the planning at some point said something like, we do need to make sure the word is is in here, that, we, that we're not just going, we Holy Spirit, do what you want to do. <laughs> go yeah, 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 yeah. And it was really interesting because I think I've got a vague memory of it being said in a way that's like, let's make sure that happens. And if I'm honest, I've, I've noticed when I've been, certainly in Farnborough, which is the site I'm at, it just naturally happens anyway. Yeah, actually, yeah. Like, actually, naturally, somebody will come and They'll bring come the and Word bring of the God word, and they will yeah. bring a passage from Scripture, like you say. And yeah, yeah. It's really good because it means it's grounded. And it's, that's right. Um, and I think that's the key, isn't it? Yeah. Because we don't want to be wishy-washy. Mm. Um, you can be, have so many situations where it's all, well, the Holy Spirit's exaggerated and the works of the Holy Spirit are exaggerated, mm. but there's nothing to base that on. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so that's, I guess, that's sort of yeah. a danger. If yeah. You go one way or the other. That's good. So, for, again, again, from a worship perspective, um, in church life, we talked about the kind of theologically rich songs. Is there anything else in worship that would, would that, that kind of, from your perspective as a worship leader, you yeah. go, this is a healthy practice healthy. to get into? I think a healthy practice is creating space. Mm-hmm. Um, a bit like I said about preaching, you know, you know, I'd encourage all of our leads, you know, in terms of preparation, again, what comes out on those Sundays mm. comes from what we're taking in. Yeah. So yeah. we have to take in the word. Mm. Um, and we may prepare a set of four or five songs, but be willing mm. to allow the Holy Spirit to say, no, I want you to stay on this song. Yeah. I want you to hone in on this verse, um, mm. you know, and, and you know, because you've got that foundation, but we are not afraid to, to move Mm. according to what the Holy Spirit is saying yeah, and good. to chuck a song out, you know, mm. it's not our set, it's not our time, this is God's time and we're honouring him and preparing ourselves by getting stuck in the word and praying and seeking his face means that we can trust him mm. because we've taken in what he's already given us, if that makes yeah. sense. And we, yeah, it does, and it yeah. might not be what we'd prepared for that Sunday. It could have been something that we'd yeah. read, Yeah, you know. Um, yeah. It's just been, it's having that freedom to encounter God through song but also through a prophetic word that, somebody on the Some team might bring or, yeah mm. yeah that's really good I was thinking from a preaching perspective as well like so we we plan our preaching series and yeah. like balance we've planned this one and balance is is what we'd call a topic based one where actually we start with what we want to preach on mm. um and then go actually the bible says this about this and so you know we and we preach it that way and then there are other series which are like we're just going to preach through a book of the bible yeah. and um one thing I notice time time again when we're preaching more topic themes one actually we've we um we take that passage of scripture and actually we may have an idea of what we wanted to preach but actually when we get to the passage we go actually the passage says that actually say is yeah. is really saying this so we're able to preach what we think god is wanting us to yeah. preach on in church but actually we're led we're led by the word and then the holy spirit comes and, and meets with us and as well so it's almost like it impacts other various but, ministries and yeah because that's probably the same for for leading small groups as well yeah, it's like yeah. what do you where are you going in this small group as yeah. you're leading it? What you you know? What, how are you gonna? What are you leaning into? What teaching are we gonna do? And what conversations are you having? Having 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 that passage that is all grounded yes. in is really yeah. important. That's um, key. That's so key. Um, I want to talk about some of the dangers then. So what, yeah. what does it look like? I guess for if, if a church might go one end of yeah. the one end of the pendulum swing, as it yeah, were. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's start with the word. What does it look like if a church were to go all word? And no, and no spirit. spirit. What does that look like? And, and yeah, I think 
it has a tendency to become quite dry. The yeah. Bible could be more of a rule book. Mm. You know, there's that mm. tendency to like Bible bash, <laughs> yeah. you know, like you haven't done this, you haven't done that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it could be quite dry, intellectual potentially. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and guess that, yeah. intellectual's fine, but when it's purely so, that, When it's purely saying, intellectual, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, sorry, yeah. it can be a little bit boring. You know, <laughs> yeah. like, I went, sorry, I'm probably jumping the gun a bit, but no, I, I did a foundation course uh, with WTC mm, this mm. year. And, um, you know, academic stuff could, could be quite <laughs> full it's, on. It's full on, isn't and it? And it could yeah. be quite boring. Mm. Um, but I just found, and I will keep saying this, you know, all of the lecturers began every session inviting mm. the Holy Spirit to come in yeah. um, and, and take his place. And so it made what they were teaching come alive and become mm. real and make me personally excited to then go and do further study. Yeah, okay. um, so that was just a really great mm. example of how really Word and Spirit went together. So yep. that had the potential to be dry, yeah. but because the Holy Spirit was invited, mm. yeah, it was, it was just really helpful. Yeah, that's, that's really good to know. Really yeah. And so... If the punk pendulum sings the other way, <laughs> towards you know, the mega be, churches that are full of yeah, spirit. Yeah, it and could be, you know, we're like. just seeking experiences. We just want to see mm. uh, miracles. We just want to see this. We don't want to hear about the word. We just want to see stuff happen mm. without that grounding. Um, when my husband Andy was uh, on his journey of faith and he was, like, looking at different churches, there was one particular church that he went to. And um, he went to a small group, and all they wanted to do was um, grow this person's leg. Okay. That was what they were praying for. Mm. The person wasn't unwell or anything like that. They just wanted to see well, just, a miracle happen. Oh, okay. But there was no biblical ground and there was no biblical foundation to say to say why this was happening. Um, and so it's just like, and you know, anybody who's impressionable could have gone to that mm. and just been completely messed up because yeah. people exaggerate the works of the Holy Spirit, not forgetting that it again has to go hand in hand mm. with the word of god yeah yeah with the written word of god so yeah and yeah. that's tricky isn't it because because god is a god of the miraculous he, is the god of the he miraculous. does do wonderful amazing yeah. like life-changing and unexplainable of things course. um but it does need to be completely rooted in scripture rooted in the word yeah. and to bring him glory not mm. just to be able to say oh come to our meetings because this is happening and da, 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 yeah, da. Okay. Yeah. i feel you know everything that we do has to give glory mm. and honor to him yeah and, it, really and, you know, we don't want to be, you know, like me, chasing experiences. Yeah. But I kind of, I wasn't rooted, you mm. know, it's just shallow because experiences, they're just going to, they're fading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But the word of God remains. That's good, so. that's good. Um, so I want to talk about a little bit about maybe going back to the individuals maybe now. And yeah. For us to begin to think about where we might be at with this. So we talked a little bit before we started filming about yeah. what's what would be some indicators maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that somebody may be living a life that maybe is out of yeah. kilter mm. and they're, 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 let's start with the word again, mm. maybe they are all word and no spirit. What what indicators might they see in their own life, do you think, that would, this is probably for both of us, isn't yeah, it? Everyone, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, all word. I get, you know, I think I was thinking maybe the whole Sailor Sundays. Mm. Um, oh, know, yeah, yeah. They might not particularly like the freedom and yeah. what they might term loosey goosey, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, not enough word, not enough. Um, mm. We're just totally just going off piste, you know. Some people don't. And it feels don't, really it feels, hard. It feels hard because, you know, yeah, mm. and they're just. You, you were saying something before we start actually about the fact that we do naturally, like each yeah, of us do have a natural, natural inclination. To, um, I guess I, it's hard, isn't it, to know. What, What's just that natural inclination that we think, oh, this is, a, this is out of my comfort zone? Yeah. And what becomes, actually, no, this is unhealthy yeah, now. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, like, if you are prone to be more word-based, I think about, like, the Pharisees who were quite legalistic and Jesus was healing mm. um, the, the, these people on the, on the Sabbath day yeah. and all they could focus was on, yeah. was on the fact that he'd broken the law yeah. rather than this amazing thing that had happened. And, yeah. Perhaps sometimes we could get too focused on we've not done this, we've not... Um, yeah, on what's not happening. Not what's not or, happening yeah. rather than what God is doing in the room. Yeah, or, that's good. You know, not in the room, but wherever mm, at any yeah. particular time. Yeah, that's a really good point. That's great. So, I, I was yeah. also wondering about the whole life change that we experience when the, when the Holy Spirit breathes through Scripture yeah. in our lives yeah. and um, whether... That if might, somebody hasn't experienced much life change in their life, that you know they might get excited for it from an intellectual perspective because intellectual they learn something new about that. And, but they yeah. know more, but they're not necessarily the life, seeing a change. That could be changed. an indicator, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. What about indicators for the 
for the spirit, spirit side. side of things, people who are really like neglecting the word. Yeah, um, it could, you know, when the prophetic word is given to someone potentially, mm. they might just, yep, yeah, that's me, rather than again weighing it up yeah, in the word, yeah. matching up is, you know, does this line up with what God says in his yeah. word? Mm. Um, you know, we can just be so easily just yeah. tricked or, you know, by false teaching and things like that if yeah. we're not. Mm. If you know, we could, like you say, we could just take anything, yeah, and just say, "Yep, yeah, that's right. That's, that's right." There's yeah. just no, and we no can get, measure. We can get swept up in these swept things because yeah. of, often it has a guise of it's, it's great, it looks it's, like it's exciting, truth. it sounds good. Um, mm, mm. Um, but that's what it says in the words, isn't it? We don't want to be swept up by every no. wind of doctrine. Yeah, um, it's really good. Yeah, so, so weighing up, weigh things up. What people say to us, really particularly in prophetic words and things like that. That's yeah. really good. Yeah, I remember a time in my life actually when. Um, I felt like I was um, operating in some of the gifts of the spirit, like just in encouraging words or prophetic words yeah. and a bit like that. And nothing too kind of outlandish, really. But I remember I came to a point where I was like, I, I'm not ever backing this up with scripture. Right. And um, and I remember at that time I I was like, I, start, I started just noticing that. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know where in the Bible it says that, or I think it says that. Yeah. And, I, and there was a lot of like, I think it's this, yeah, yeah, I think yeah, this yeah. is right. And, um, and I remember having to like sort of, I didn't... Like stop and go. Oh no, I'm stopping and leaving yeah. the room. But I remember a period of time going. I need to get more into the word here because personally, I was operating in in the in charismatic that, yeah, and yeah. in what uh, what I felt God was putting on my heart. But I could sense that that was out of kilter, yeah, and yeah. Um, you know, it was. You recognise that need. Yeah, that, yeah, re that to need to get deeper in. in the word, and um, yeah, and uh, you know, that took time, and yeah. you know, and, yeah. and we're we're it is like we're, a, all in a, we're on a journey, aren't we? And I think we're going to yeah. constantly have that. That pull, mm, yeah, it's right. Lean in one way or the other. Just, just the nature of us. And sure. Yeah, it's, we have this phrase throughout this series. It's, it's a tension to manage, isn't it? Is. it? It's, it's not necessarily a problem to solve, but a tension to, yeah. to manage, and so that's great. Yeah. Um, cool. Any last thoughts, Shari, from you in terms of? Well, I this really content? shared. Um, so when I was preaching, I just loved this quote from R.T. Kendall, mm. who really summed it up. Um, and he just says, "All word and no spirit, we dry up. All spirit and no word, we blow up." But with both word and spirit, we grow up. I just, I just think that's great. That's really good. Yeah. That is really good. Yeah. That's a great way to, to wrap it up, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> great. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you for that. Um, as I said um, at the beginning of this conversation, if you haven't watched uh, this message from Shari, um, you can go and watch that back on YouTube, um, as well as all of the other messages that we've heard across this Balance conversation and this Balance series. You can check out on the YouTube channel and you can find all these conversations yeah. and all the preachers there. Um, we'd love for you to, to connect to us through those messages and hopefully they've been helpful and beneficial to you. But thanks, Shari. Thank we really appreciate it and then um, we'll catch you soon.